my, 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 my. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Hey, that sounds like church to me. Take up your cross. I don't care what you're going through. Pick up your cross anyhow. Follow Jesus. Don't be ashamed to say that you know him. And that's, what I'm, that's why I'm here this afternoon. Just to show the world that I know who I have believed. And I know my Redeemer liveth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. How many have been blessed? At this time, I will invite our brother Richard Milligan just to come and share with us a testimony. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you, thanks to God. Oh my, it's so exciting to be here. First, I wanted to say to you, can I take this off? I wanted to say to you, first of all, I have, this is the greatest privilege that I have had in, I, I cannot remember to have my wife and I come and join our voices with you going right up to the very throne room of God, and you people have got a hold of something here. Man. Amen. I, I, I don't know what more I can say to you. You already got it. It's such a privilege, such a privilege to see and to, to share that same spirit that we have in many other parts of the world that God has come down amongst his people in this glorious message. And he just took us upon him and put our bosom right on his chest. We can share that love with him, feel his love toward us. Most wonderful thing. And to see you all gathered in one room with all them smiling faces is the most incredible thing. Praise the Lord. It's such an honor to meet your, your pastor and, and, and the different ones that we have met in the hospitality and to be able to come with Brother Brother Perry and his family, it is, it is just a remarkable experience for me. But I have to tell you in just a very few short words, I'm going to cut this very short because we want to hear the word of God tonight. We're all excited. And, and I was privileged at one time, I don't know if it was privileged or not, but I was uh, associate pastor with Benny Hinn, which I understand many of you know who he was or who he is, I guess. And, but, you know, we've been deceived. Uh, Revelations 12 9 tells us that Satan has deceived the whole world and, and I was deceived brothers and sisters into something that I know God this you know our footsteps are ordered of the Lord and there I was and maybe it's for a purpose of being to stand here tonight for one person I don't know but God has has opened our eyes that he says that there have been be where we've been deceived but he also says that the bride's eyes they are not deceived now they've already He's been exposed. We can see his tactics. We can see his tricks. We know that he's already beaten. The world may be deceived. The other church places may be deceived, but we're not deceived. God has opened our eyes to us. Praise the name of the Lord. That's where we become an overcomer. By overcoming all the tricks of the enemy out there. And you know, we're coming up on a holiday that we celebrate in America. When we come through customs, they ask the custom agent, ask me about uh, celebrating Halloween. He said, you guys in, uh, in America celebrate Halloween. He said, you go crazy with it. He said, but here, we're not so bad with it. But in, you know what it means? In Halloween, we put a mask on our face. We don't, not Christians, not the bride. But they put a mask to deceive the people. They go for a trick or treat. You understand how it goes. And that mask is to deceive the people into making them believe that he is somebody that he is not. And the devil is the greatest deceiver of all. That's why we call it the devil's holiday. Because he is still deceiving people today. He's putting on a mask and make people think they're worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ and they're not. 
All through that time as a Pentecostal preacher and the times with Benny Hinn and different people like this, I had that same problem, although I knew there was something lacking deep, deep, deep within the inside. The miracles would happen. People would fall on their faces before God. They'd fall over. You wave your hand and people fall down. All these great things would happen. But all at the same time, I knew there was something deep inside of me that was missing. There was a true anointing there. Yes, brothers and sisters, a very, very true anointing. But that anointing was on the flesh. It was on the outer man. Oh, yes, miracles would happen. People would be healed, but that's the flesh. When Brother Branham and God come down through Brother Branham and gave us this glorious message, something different happened. It went deep in the inside. It changed your being. You become somebody that you were not before. You are a new creation. You can't take a flesh anointing and compare with that. This is the greatest miracle that has ever happened to mankind, that God would come down, put his very life deep within you, and then you can live like him. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Over 12 years, I was out there preaching the gospel. And after 12 years, and I got a hold of this glorious message, then I became born again. Oh, amen, amen. Oh, my. Oh, my. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, John 17, 3 tells us life eternal is just to know him. Just to know him. That word know in the original means to, to have an intimate spiritual relationship with him. And it's nothing of, of being falling on the floor and getting up and going and living the way you want to live. It is, it is having a change take place. I'll tell you a short story without getting into a lot of the details. The brother that introduced this message to me, he was not living the way he should. He was still smoking and doing the things that he should not be doing. And he was trying to tell me about this glorious outpouring that God gave us in this hour. And I wouldn't listen to him. At that time, I was with Benny Hinn. I wouldn't listen to what he was trying to tell me. And, and I, I got to the point that I, I just couldn't even take anything what he was saying, the way he witnessed to me. He was so, uh, he actually, I, I'll just tell you, he had me by the shirt one day and put me up against the wall and held me up there and told me, he said, he said you better grow up in the things of God. They, don't, they didn't eat apples in the garden. And my wife come rocking into the room and says, Arnold, put him down, put him down. We don't talk like this. He was explaining what they did in the garden. And all this went on. I actually told that man, don't you ever talk to me about anything spiritual. And I never seen him again for six years. Six years later, I ran across this man. I was preaching over in Orlando, Florida, and he was there, and we went out to dinner afterward, and I seen something so different. We had dinner, and I could not understand what it was that was different, what I was looking at. I sat there and looked at him across that table, and the thing that I asked him to do, and I'm the preacher now, and I asked him to do something for me, and he said, I can't do those things anymore. I said, what happened to this guy? He wasn't smoking anymore. He was gentle, and, and, and he was just looking at me, and I, I kept saying to God, what is different about this man? It's not the same man. And I began to realize it was the same skin, the same flesh, but there was somebody totally different living inside that man. Totally different, a whole new creation. Not one that has been made over, fixed up, propped up. It was a new creation. And this now, the Bible started to come alive to me to start to see something that we've been preaching about for 12 years. But now I begin to see it. And all these questions in my mind have now started to become reality to me. And I started to see, and things started to open up what God was trying to teach us in this time. And it, a long story short, through that brother, he got me some materials of Brother Brandon. And I, he was the last man in the world I ever wanted to ask for any materials like this. But I did get them through him. And I sat there and I started reading. And I got the tape. I am a witness from uh, uh, Brother Bisco. And, and, and where he was on the hunting trip with Brother Branham and all. And I couldn't contain myself. I called this brother back and I said, this brother Bisco. See, I didn't know there was another person that believed this way other than the guy who was witnessing to me. I, I never heard of this kind of stuff. But anyway, I said, do you know this brother Bisco? Is he still alive or what? He said, yes, I know him. And my wife and I were on the first flight out to Vancouver, and we come up there. And brother, I tell you what, I've seen a whole room full of new creation. I mean, I've seen about 600 of them. 
I couldn't believe what I had seen. Oh, man, they took us to dinner at their homes every night and all. I thought this was all put up for just me. I flew in there three months later without telling anybody I was coming, and I saw the same thing. So it wasn't no put on thing. This was the character I was trying to have in my church, and I couldn't get it there. Man cannot do it. God can do it. And oh, my eyes began to come open, and then I got a hold of that book on the seven church ages. Oh, my. Oh, I don't want to take too long, brother. But I saw that book, The Seven Church Ages. I want to tell you, I don't know who all come out of Pentecost, but I'll say this. One of the greatest end-time mysteries of Pentecost is when that rapture is going to take place. Is it going to be pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, or post-tribulation? They've actually split churches over that. I started reading in the church age book the first day of reading in there. I saw where I was the bride in that palace before the tribulation. The end time mystery was over. I said to my wife, I said, this is not a man. This came from scripture. I said, this is God speaking here. We all read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, and Luke were, were one way, but John was a little different. He could see eternity past, eternity future, and this is what I saw with Brother Branham. He could see eternity past. Oh my, yes. And then he saw sitting in that, he saw sitting in that palace whenever the Lord come to reveal himself with his brethren. And I saw myself sitting in that palace with him. And I said, oh, glory to God. I had to get water baptized, brothers and sisters. I got water baptized. Brother Bisco water baptized my wife and I. And I want to tell you, one, nothing, nothing short of the supernatural. When I come up out of that water, nothing short of the supernatural. And he gave me the microphone like this. He said, I want you to say something to the people. And I, I what do you say when you're just bubbling all over? But all I can remember what I said is I've held revivals all over the world. I said, but this is the first time I realized what a revival really is because I had it inside of me. It was my revival. Each one of you have had your revival. I wish I could hear each one of your testimonies. Each one is supernatural. If you've heard that eagle scream in your life, it's supernatural. It is just as exciting for you and you and you as it is for me. And I would love to hear your stories. Praise the name of the Lord. But it was my lot to give you this one today. And I want to say this Bible become a brand new book to me when this happened. I'm just going to give two more little short excerpts here, and I'm going to leave Brother Perry come. But I want to say the Bible, I had preached for years of a trinity in a Godhead. I was tradition. as the way it was brought up. I was brought up as a Baptist. You know. But I want to say I knew now I come with a different approach. I want to say back when I was still with Benny Hinn, uh, people started to come from believing this message, talking about the Godhead. I wrote a thesis about a half inch thick proving there were three in, uh, in the Godhead. How I ever found that, I don't know because I can't find it anymore. <laughs> I had a different approach to God now. I said, I know Brother Branham was your spokesman. I know he was your prophet. I said, but Lord, now I know that the Godhead is the way he said. I said, but would you show it to me? It was a little different approach. I think our approach to God means a lot sometimes. It was less than two weeks. I was sitting on my sofa reading the Bible. My wife reading the Bible down the other end, and I seen it one day. I just saw it. And I mean, that blood started going up through my neck. I said, honey, I got it. I got it. I got it. She said, you got what? I said, I see the Godhead. I seen it. God opened it up in the scripture to me. Oh, my. And then that blood running up through my neck, and then I began to realize the very same scriptures that I used to prove that there were three, and now I can never see three again. The revelated, the, God become, the, the book becomes a whole brand new book with revelation on it. Oh, we know where the devil wants to go. He's sitting, uh, he's sitting at the mouths of the congregation. That was his desire, and he's sitting there. People are worshiping him, and they think they're worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I want to say, lastly, the last thing that God did for me, I, could have, I had a hard time believing that all these brethren that I knew were going to not make the rapture. 
because they give their lives to the preaching of the gospel. They preached about a rapture. They preached, uh, or they, they went on four-hour sleep schedules, many of them, and much more than I did, and I, I just couldn't believe they weren't going to make it. But you know, even in your lives today, God will call you for a total separation. Oh, my. He'll, he'll make you put all that junk behind you that you've brought along with traditions and, and where you've come from and whether it's been, been denominations and Pentecostalism and whatever it was and whatever doesn't fit in here that isn't pure and holy, he's going to make you, he's going to cut you from it. It's just that simple. He's going to cut you from it. And we were going to have, before I come in the message, we were starting to put together a minister's conference which was going to be the largest pastor's gathering in the world. We we're going to have over 60,000 pastors gathered together in Orlando, Florida. And we were having a preliminary meeting. And, and uh, there was probably two or 3,000 people at this meeting. And I had about a two-hour drive to go there. And I got in a little, I got in the traffic, got there a little bit late. But as I come walking in the back of that room, they were already preaching. And without going into detail, but I, they were preaching heresy right. I mean, the, the moment I walked in the door, I recognized they were off scripture, even for Pentecostal, let alone for the message. And so I, I got in the back, and everybody's praising God. There were all these people there praising God, standing room only. I'm standing in the back, and I said, Lord Jesus. And that's all I said, Lord Jesus, what's going on here? And then all this loud noise where they were praising deafened me. I could still see their hands raised and mouths moving, but I couldn't hear one sound. God deafened my ears, but I heard a voice. It wasn't audible. But everybody wants to hear the voice of God, but it's one of the most fearful things you ever hear when you hear. And I can say of all my preaching days, it's one of the few times this has ever, ever happened. In fact, it's the only time that it's ever, ever happened. And that voice said, whenever I said, Lord Jesus, what is going on here? He said, as you were reading in my prophet's book this morning, talking about the tares that are being bundled and going for the burning, he said, that word that you're hearing is the it's the rope going around those bundles right now. He said, get out of there before you get caught in the rope. And it was that false word that was going forth that was bundling these tears. And I, I got so scared, I ran out of that place. I ran out to the parking lot. I ran and jumped in my car, locked the doors as if it was going to do any good. But I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, I never turned around and looked back from that day to this. Never one time. Never one time. Been 22 years, 23 maybe, I don't know, but I've never, I, you know, I found that I, I entered that rest of Hebrews 4. I've entered into it. I've never had to search one time. Everything you have is right here in this message. And all you got to do is just keep digging, digging, digging deeper. Brother Dandy talked there this morning and saying, my, oh my, oh my, I don't care what you're going through. There's something in this message will take care of you. God will take care of you. I want to say, you've seen the trapeze in the, in the circuses where they swing, they go out on a swing, then they let go to grab another swing. So many times what we try to do is, is hang on to this swing a little bit and grab this one. And you don't get anywhere by doing that. You're just going to struggle around and not get anywhere. All I can say, let go. Let go of anything you've got to hold on. Let go. God won't drop you. He'll just tear you right on through. God bless you, brothers. I'll see you in the rapture. Glory to God. God bless you, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the testimony of a true witness. Amen. He hasn't had time to tell you all. But that brother used to be the right hand man of Benny Hinn. They used to live in the same street, four houses away from each other. He was a big Pentecostal man. He used to pastor a church uh, in the Pentecostal uh, denomination. But then he said, the Lord saved me. when he came to this message hallelujah he says he saw it all you know he could see people he could see you know whatever the Benny Hins and them were doing he says some of those things are not fake there is an anointing that is there but it's on the flesh 
But he says, when he got into the message, a revival started from within. That's where this message takes you. Something in your soul. A gospel that changes from the inside. And it manifests on the outside. Until you know I'm a brand new creation. I'm a brand new man. And I know he was talking to some people that can say, indeed, I know what you're talking about. Because I once was there, but the Lord changed my inside. And he made me a brand new creation. To God be the glory. Now don't think he's spring chicken in the message. He's been 22 years in this message. Since the Lord delivered him out of that chaos. Amen. My, that's what you call the grace of God. That's what you call predestination. You know, when he was telling me that he got into this meeting, he was part of them that were organizing it. 60,000 pastors and the preliminary meeting having two, 3,000 people. And the meeting was going on. He arrived there. He was one of the organizers. Walking into the building, with all the noises and the amens, people saying amen to the wrong things, God shut him off from whatever he was hearing to speak to him in that still small voice. And he spoke to him and he told him, what you are hearing is the rock that's bundling up these tears for the burning. Run for your life. And he said he took off from there with all the speed he could take off with. Rushed out of the building, rushed into the power, into the car park, jumped into his car, closed the doors, locked them. That Pentecost denomination would follow, not follow him. Hallelujah. That's when a man is running for his life. And he said, from there I never turned back. Amen. He told me he went back to his church. And from there, he went and he started preaching the Godhead. And he preached the serpent seed to the Pentecost of Bunch. And he said he, he, when each time he would preach, the numbers would come down. When he preached serpent seed, they came down to 30. Then he said it's time to resign. <laughs> then he stepped down. <laughs> then he went to the big man, you know. I think the, the, the man is in charge of about 700 different churches or something like that. He went to him and he said, I come to give my resignation. And the man had a bunch of tapes that the brother had preached in the church about serpent seed and all that about Brother Branham and everything. And he says, yeah, God, should, you surely should be hearing from God because I was coming to speak to you as well. And he says, yeah, I've come to give my resignation. And then he said, uh, okay, but I want you to tell the people nothing is wrong, everything is okay, and then uh, you step down. So you went to the church and he said, okay, I'll do it. Then he said to the people, I'm leaving, I'm stepping down, but before I go, let me tell you, I've told you the truth. And if you want to know more, you know my phone number. <laughs> then he walked out of the church. <laughs> Praise be to God. God still has his people. We're so glad to have people that can make a stand like that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. As 